What's up divers? Welcome to our channel Asul Unlimited where we teach all things scuba diving. I'm Sarah. I'm Aitor. And today we're going to be helping you choose the right mask for you. Yeah. There are lots of different styles of mask and it's a very personal decision. It's the one piece of equipment that, you know, no matter where you're traveling in the world, you should always take your own mask because it's going to make or break your dives. Great. So let's get to it. Every time we teach a new uh, open water diver or we certify any divers, the first piece of equipment that we recommend is, uh, is a mask. Remember, the, the most important thing that you look for in a mask is not what it looks like or the brand or whatever. The, the big important part is how it feels and how it fits you. You have a few different styles. You can choose a single plane of glass. You can have two separate ones. Yeah. And this really just depends on what kind of field of view that you want. Yeah, also it's depends on uh, how your uh, forehead is, if you have like a really pronounced uh, forehead or not, because the uh, separation in between will bother you a lot just on top of the, of the nose. Another option can be this kind of window side, and this can be interesting for people that want to have more of that peripheral. A lot of us choose not to have this because they feel a little it's like a little bit distracting yeah for me as a dive guide when guiding people i remember back in thailand i used to to have those masks and they bothered me a lot because i was feeling like my divers were all the time like going ahead of me because you have that kind of a bad vision so it's not a nice feeling because you you are very distracted just paying attention to people around you but it's all personal preference there's also a difference for masks in the uh, volume that they hold okay so obviously when we go diving we're surrounded by water but we maintain this air pocket in the mask and this it's not really that important volume uh, for scuba divers but if you are thinking about doing some free diving with the same mask you might want to consider a low profile mask we have uh, sort of low profile this would probably be the most yeah but I don't think this isn't it's even still, no, it's still for diving so you can look into that if that's something that you want to kind of double double dip in you can use them for for both as long as the the fit you know the mask still fits your your face uh, the only thing with volume for scuba diving that I've found is in teaching I used to have a low profile or a low volume mask like this and I found that it was a little bit more difficult to show certain skills like partial flood mask you know it was a little bit more difficult to um, show that to the student with such a low profile since a lot of students are going to be diving with more of these big big volume masks but that's pretty much it another thing to consider with the glass so you have the clear glass option and that will just give you a normal viewpoint right and then there's also the tinted okay so you can see here it's much darker i can't really see his eyeballs this is supposed to be really helpful at the surface so it reduces glare and things when you're at um the surface or on the boat for for me as a scuba instructor i don't really like this kind of mask just because people feel much more comfortable when they can see your eyeballs especially when they're learning skills and things so this for me is not a nice option as a scuba instructor but for somebody just going fun diving that's that's great yeah also you need to keep something on mind this is like a sunglasses mm -hmm. like regular sunglasses so they scratch really really quick even if you don't scratch the surface the tempered glass kind of disintegrates you know like a like a bad quality uh, sunglasses mm -hmm. where you have like spot and scratch all over the place the same happened to them and then it's really difficult to, yeah, to focus on the water because you have that kind of scratch on, on the way. Cool. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. The next part of the mask that is really important is the skirt. There are lots of different materials that they use to make the skirt. Some of them are much more thick, yeah. right? less flexible. Some of them are very, very soft, like this one. Thanks, Eva, Alan Finito. Yeah. 
very soft and very comfortable. Have a look at this Wow. One. This is really, really thick. For me, it's uncomfortable. That kind of material, I mean, if it fits your face, it can be just fine. But if there's just a slight, you know, your face is just a little bit different, I mean, that is gonna lead to leaks very easily. Yeah, that material doesn't fit or adapt really, really easily. Not yeah. adaptable, yeah. that's a good point. So we tend to go for like much softer materials. They just are more forgiving of different uh, kinds of faces. But again, it's it's all about the fit and how, how you feel with it. The other thing with the skirt is that typically, I mean, there are lots of different colors that you can choose, but I mean, pinks and purples and whites and everything. Uh, but the standard ones are black and clear. A lot of us end up choosing black uh, mostly for... I mean, for me, it's kind of a cleanliness factor. Not that they're more clean, but that you don't see all the gross stuff that's in them. <laughs> yeah, you don't see, like, bloody things on the pocket nose or the mold. Eh? When, when they become, like, dirty or malty on the, on the white ones, you, you will see everywhere. It yeah. lo looks nasty. You know? Yeah, I mean, one thing, if you have a clear mask, you will be more on top of keeping your mask clean. Yeah. So that, that could be a benefit, you know, um, but for those of us that are disgusting, I think we kind of go for the black ones because yeah. it's not as obvious. But even if you clean them, like black spots appear inside the silicone mm. and, and it's impossible to to get rid of, uh, of them. And they do end up just turning yellow. Like this one is a very old kind of, um, I don't know, looks like an 80s style uh, mask. And it just has turned yellow. That's a good look for <laughs> me, right? right. <laughs> yeah, for me, I also prefer black. Because uh, classic is classy. Classy and classic? Yeah. <laughs> Classic, classic. As for all the different colors that you can find in masks, they're very cool. People really like them. Just a reminder that they do fade quite quickly. We had yeah. a dive master that had a hot pink one and it turned into a, a yeah. like Easter egg pink yeah. pastel very in, quickly. Yeah, in like three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Red color, pink color, they, yeah, they disappear really quick. Yeah. White is one that normally lasts longer. But it does turn but also yellow turn as well. Yellow. And let's see, we also have the mask strap here. Most of these are pretty standard. The way that you can kind of uh, customize this is by either choosing a cloth mask strap or just a regular one. For me personally, I have just kept this style without the mask strap, mostly because when I was diving in California and I had to have a hood, I really didn't enjoy having the cloth because anytime I did a giant stride into the water, it just slipped straight off. So I've just gotten into the habit of using these because it stays stuck. But if it is just a hassle and it keeps pulling your hair out because I know that that's annoying, that's a great option. Yeah, also I prefer if you choose the just the rubber band, make sure that it's a, like a big one with a, without like big gaps in between. For example, ones that I don't like too much is that one with just only two separate the strap because they break really, really easy. You try, you try to pull them, and I don't know those ones. They are really easy to to fit on the back of the head. So now let's talk about fit. How to fit your mask because we see people doing this a lot of different ways and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each one. First to consider with looking at different masks you want to recognize whether you have a wide or a narrow face. So knowing what shape your face is is going to really narrow down the options of masks. So for me I have a very wide face. With my wide face <laughs> um, I would not choose something that is like this. This is more for kids anyways, yeah. but it's a very deep kind of space so that will fit really perfectly on somebody with a narrow, narrow face. But I would want to go for something that's a little bit more shallow here. As for Itor, something like this, which is a much more pronounced shape, would fit much better because it's going to hug his face. Yeah, here on the, especially on the side. Yeah. Next, what I like to do when I'm fitting these is to look up and just place the mask on my face. Wanna check that out? So here, without any pressure, we just let the mask rest. And we wanna see that the mask is completely flush to the skin. No like big pockets lifting up. So it should be really just resting on the entire 
face. Another tip or trick is just to place the mask and inhale to see if you have any any leak or uh, air is coming is coming in. So <laughs> so even if you inhale and you make like a good seal with the mask and then you pull and suck the air, uh, that doesn't guarantee that the mask is not gonna leak. Okay. So it's just to know if you have like a big problems or fitting problems, but it's not the, uh, the perfect method. Yeah, it's just kind of like a, a good follow-up to checking it without any pressure on your face. We see all the time people just like put the mask on and put the strap on as well. Strap on. Um, and this isn't a good way to fit a mask because you're getting the pressure from the mask strap. So you're, it's, it's going to feel like it fits better than it actually does. Yeah. The next thing with fitting and talking about leaks is the actual fit of the mask when it's on. Okay, We see a lot of beginner divers really crank the mask strap so they really tighten the mask strap so that the yeah. mask is like sucked onto the face yeah like that <laughs> looks good so the reason why this isn't a good idea is because it does that yeah. and it creates creases it's just like when we smile underwater and we get those creases we always get water whenever we smile and that's no big deal yeah. but if we're creating those creases all the time by tightening the the mask strap then we're gonna have water in our face the whole time. And we're also not gonna have a nice dive because it's going to hurt yeah. eventually. So the really important thing with fit, I don't know why I keep using this mask. This mask is terrible. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> with fit, we should have the mask and the strap in a tightness that you feel comfortable, but it's also just like resting on the face because when we dive we're gonna get pressure on our mask from the water and that's going to hold in place like you don't want this so that the mask will just like come off you don't want it so loose that it will just come off in the water but you want it to just be like this is really loose the ideally you should be able to dive without a strap on the back i saw people diving with the strap uh, get, getting broken mm -hmm. while diving and they just rest the mask on the face and the pressure of the water keep it on. And that's going to make the dive more comfortable too because I'm sure all of you have experienced the the pressure, what, the after dive mask, <laughs> that red circle all around your face and it just doesn't feel good. No. Related with the pressure of the, of the mask, the position of the strap is very, very important. If it's too high, like here on the top of the head, it's gonna pull the mask up, leaving a gap here in between, like also pulling the nose up. It's really uncomfortable, hurts, mm -hmm. and also water get inside all the time. Same happens if the strap is too low, okay? If it's too low, will be no, no enough pressure, or will be no pressure uh, to keep the mask on, and it will be like loose all the time. Yeah. So it must be just here on the on the back of the head. Yeah, it should be right above the ears. You yeah. see that all the time that people are putting it right over the ears. And this just, I mean, I can already feel it. It's loosening up right here, right here. And yeah. I, I would definitely have water in my, in my face the whole time, yeah. for sure. And by tightening, it's not going to fix the problem. It's a mask strap position issue. One more thing that okay. I just come up with that through the video. So I think now that people is ready or they have more knowledge about how to choose a mask, it's important to know what to do with the mask when it's brand new. Mm, yeah. Okay? How to take care of the mask, but obviously what to do to go on your first dive without uh, London in your face. <laughs> without yeah. London in your face. Fog what? Foggy mask. Foggy mask. <laughs> Cute. No, that, yeah, that's really important because, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to new divers that you can't just take it out of the box and go diving. We know, <laughs> but it is what it is. There is a film that the manufacturers put on the uh, glass to protect it, and it fogs up like crazy. Like, yeah. 
really bad. So what are the ways that we can fix that so that our first dive is not a total disaster? Okay, the most common one is using toothpaste. So you put it in, you scratch a little bit with something really soft, like a toothbrush, and you can leave it the whole night with the, with the toothpaste inside and then wash it in the morning. That will remove that like greasy film from, mm. from the inside. And that's a really gentle way of doing it. I've also seen people use, um, same, like a toothbrush and dishwasher, bleh, dishwashing soap. Yes, yeah, so something that removes the grease. The one that you will see as a last minute uh, problem solving uh, trick yeah. is the lighter trick. It's not the best option because it can damage the mask if you do it incorrectly, yes. um, but it is very quick. So if you get a mask and you realize, oh shoot, I didn't do that, and you're just about to jump in the water, you can take care of the film by burning it. Fire! Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? If you do that, make sure that somebody else do it for you. So you can blame them if they <laughs> it up. No, but something that did it before, okay? Because you need to know how much you can burn the mask. Be careful with the with the rubber or the silicone, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's really important to not um, over burn because you can really damage the glass. I mean, these things are really strong, but adding heat, just like to anything, it weakens the materials. So you want to burn it. You want to see that because um, it'll look like it's burning away the film. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's opening. <laughs> and it'll a lot of times turn a little bit black. Uh, but you want to really be conscious of how hot it's getting. You really don't want it to be super hot to the touch. You just want to do it enough to get that film off. And like he said, let somebody else do it so you can blame them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then, obviously, before every single dive, you should like wash the mask, clean it. It's like a lot of products on, on the internet or on the shop that they are uh, eco-friendly and they are like anti-foggy, yeah. so they are very nice. Um, if it's your own mask, I mean, for me, I'm big on just using the spit. Uh, yeah. Spit for me is great. Obviously, now we're in times of COVID. So um, using the products that they have on the boat are best if you're using rental gear. Yeah, I think now with the COVID, the greener recleaner is all. You know? <laughs> what? The greener recleaner. Glean greener? Greener recleaner. 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 <laughs> the greener <laughs> recleaner. Are you saying the greener? The cleaner? No. The greener re-cleaner. Where yeah. did you hear that? <laughs> this is, I mean, on my ADC, this is part of the exam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have failed then. I didn't know that one. <laughs> the greener re-cleaner. Just you didn't know that? the more you know. <laughs> I think that's about it. I think that will get you started on finding the right mask for you. If you have any questions on mask fitting or on uh, brands or anything that, you know, more opinion based from us, just let us know in the comments below and we're happy to share that with you. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos. And if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, check out more of our videos. We're also on Instagram and Facebook. Just connect with us. We'd love to get to know you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Ah. <laughs> okay, that's one of the most common things that we see when people are complaining about water getting in their face is just that the skirt has folded. Okay, so just be careful with that. great. Wow. What is going on? <laughs> this... White face. White face? Yeah. Are you calling me a white face? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> it's nothing to be ashamed.